so I'm trying a different setup today. Um, I have a bunch of found objects from the yard, a bunch of cut lavender and some um, herbs and flowers that I found. So I'm gonna try to do kind of a more graphic approach and I'm thinking of using these for a next set of stickers if it turns out well. So there is no specific composition that I'm trying out here. If it ends up looking nice, then that's great. But um, right now I'm really just looking to study each individual piece. And it's been forever since I've done one of these, so be patient with me. <laughs> My setup is super crazy. I might be doing a couple of pages. I'm gonna try to do a decent composition and I'm gonna put a little bit of thought into how things are laid out. But, so here's some lavender. Um, I have some of this, I don't know how to pronounce it, lemon verbana. And this is a really nice herb that we have. It's turning into a tree. But it smells so good. I always recommend it for noob gardeners. And you can use it in essential oils or um, just anything that you want to smell like lemons. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is kind of gross right now. Okay. Let's start with these two. Uh, I also have some lemons in there. I'm gonna throw one in there for good measure. Let's put this one up here. And then I have three different kinds of lavender from our garden. But uh, just gonna start with these for now. I'm using the palette that I'm putting together from Jerry's Artorama. I don't know if any of you have been keeping up to date with my posts, but I'm making a palette. I picked out specific colors that I thought you would all enjoy, and that should be coming out, I don't know. <clears throat> Sometime soon. I will definitely let you know when it does. I'm sitting really close to my subject, which is a little bit unique. Normally I would want to be standing back and simplifying, but since I'm focusing on uh, details, I wanna be really close. I do have some extra colors that I've had sitting around, some of these violets, which are really hard to get with a good light fast rating. So adding in some of these darks. The lighting isn't ideal. I would prefer natural light, but I will take what I can get. I have a little bit of natural light from our skylight, and then I brought in a studio light. Oh, sorry, I'm echoing, hold on. And my iPad over here. Okay. For those that are new to seeing me paint live and don't really know my setup, um, here is my palette. And it's a Mijello palette. I have a couple of these lying around. This is uh, pretty well used. I have a warm and cool of each of the primaries added in a, ca uh, 
some kind of a orange. I forget what the specific name is here. Permanent orange and goes all the way down and added a few extras like these greens. I have a nice leafy green here and a darker, uh, what is it called? All the names are a little bit different for the Turner Design Gouache that I'm using. So I can't really name them offhand, but here's yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And I feel like this palette right here is everything that you need, pretty much. Of course, here are my additional uh, purples, which normally I would try to figure out how to make it from these, but since these are kind of spot illustrations, I'm really gonna try to focus and get good purple. So here's a dioxazine purple from M. Graham, and this is brand new. I have never used it before and just wanna try it out. And here is a brilliant red violet uh, from Windsor & Newton. So let's see how this goes. Um, let's get some of these violets in here. For the parts hitting the light, I'm leaning a little bit warmer and then I'm gonna cool it down into the shadows. I really love these lavender petals. They're so delicate and they look uh, almost like fish scales. And it kind of carries down into this part and there's hints of this purple that go all the way down. So I'm not gonna go in and finish each one. I'm gonna work how I normally do, which is uh, kind of blocking things in and then working in circles. So let's just get the basics down for here. Adding these shadows. And then right here for this shadow, if you look closely, there's a little bit of reflected color. It's a little bit darker from the petal. It looks kind of like a mess right now. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. That's part of the fun of it, I guess. When I do my demos, I like to do things that I really don't know how it's gonna be. I don't like to super plan things out. All right, so that is the basic understanding of that piece of lavender. Uh, I'm gonna do one of these lemons just as kind of a palette cleanser in a way. I love painting lemons, they're so fun. the center part and this is a really juicy lemon the inside is a lot more cool than you would expect the light isn't going right through it so it's a little bit darker and then the white part I don't have any scientific terms for fruit, so bear with me. But this part is actually not as white as you would think. So 
I'm toning it down with a little bit of yellow. And everything is wet and wet right now. So you'll see everything kind of bleeding together. Let's get a close up. Oh, there it is. And I don't mind that it bleeds together because I will be going over it again. And I've been trying to learn to leave some of these marks that bleed together because it's really pretty. I'm gonna ground it right now with some shadows. There's always the contact shadow, which is where the object is touching the ground, and that's going to be the darkest. And then there's a little bit of reflected light from the lemon, which is yellow. But it's not as yellow as the rind. It's still going to be a little bit darker, and in this case, a little bit cooler. And because there's a couple of different light sources, um, the shadow color is changing a little bit. Again, I'm not going for perfection right now, just blocking stuff in. I do have my iPad set up next to me and I'm trying to pay attention if any comments come in. I can't read Spanish, but hello from Argentina. <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning in. It's really cool that I can talk to you all. All right, so there's the lemon. Let's move on to something else right now. Uh, we have this lemon verbana. Please correct me if I'm saying it wrong. It's one of those things where you don't really say the word out loud. So you, I mean, I think about it a lot, but I just never really talk about it. These little, White flowers on this are so pretty and delicate. And I'm gonna start doing some of these leaves. So I have a couple of greens on here, but I don't like to use them straight from the tube. I always like to add a little bit of some other colors to it to tone it down. Personally, I feel like it's very unnatural looking if you're using it straight from the tube. So um, some good tricks is to use a complementary color or something like a burnt sienna to tone it down and make it feel more earthy. I'm not really following my drawing at all. You get the idea. A little bit. I mean, there's a lot of leaves here. Normally, I would just kind of simplify it and not focus on each leaf, but since we're doing such a up-close version, I'm going to focus on each leaf. And looking closely, there's some cool stuff happening here. <clears throat> I 
I'm paying attention to how the leaves are kind of curling up and around each other. The stem is kind of a lighter green and it carries all the way through. And the center stem is the darkest part. It's kind of this pretty red, burgundy color. And as it gets closer up here, it turns more green. And there's hints of this burgundy all the way through into the flowers. Add some shadow. The shadows are really important. Hopefully I can make the color just different enough from the leaves so that they read. It's kind of tricky. squinting and trying to simplify these flowers because it is pretty busy and I'm also squinting to simplify the shadow but looking close there's a lot of cool colors in the shadow too there's hints of these pink bits coming into it from the flowers. Um, let's see here. The flowers are tricky because they're almost white and this is a white paper but they've got a small, very faint twinge of pink. So just gonna block this in. Maybe add a little yellow ochre. And this is only on the side uh, that's hitting the light. As you come down to the shadow side, it's a little bit darker, a little bit cooler, and leaning more towards a violet. It's almost 
more gray in a way. this really pretty yellow flower. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty much the only thing that hasn't been dried out from the heat. I've been really bad about watering our garden. Oh no, I just covered my hand in paint. Ugh. Oh wait, I see there's a whole bunch of questions. Um, I will be saving this if I remember and do things correctly. Sometimes I've accidentally deleted them. So hopefully cross your fingers. Technology is not really my friend. I've been working in a tech industry and I'm like, fairly tech savvy, but I feel like I'm still pretty far behind. I swear, as you get older, it's just harder to keep up with this stuff. All right, I'm gonna work on this flower. And I'm gonna sketch it in to be safe. Um, everything's kind of going down this way. But this flower is also painted that direction. Let me see if I can find a better angle. Nope, I like it facing down. I'm gonna go at the same angle. Like I said, these are just for stickers. Oops. So I'm not really caring that much about the composition. Yellow flowers are really tricky to paint. You have to be very careful about uh, the more saturated parts, like the bright yellows, because the more paint you put on, the darker it's gonna get. So I'm gonna make my attempt. So I'm watering down the paint. Here, let me show you. It's a pretty watery consistency right now. I'm gonna add even more. I want it to be really, not super, super liquidy, but um, fairly much so. And I'm gonna go over all the areas that have this really bright yellow. And even if it's a bit in the shadow, it's fine. With uh, this kind of watered down paint, it's gonna be easy to go over in any color. The trick is showing enough restraint from covering it all. I'm just gonna go over the whole silhouette. All right. Get some of this stem in there. Uh, thank you, Carla. I forgot my sign today. Got 
this leaf coming up here. I really like this flower. I want to learn the name of it. So if any of you know, as we go along, you can shout it out. I like it because it's like, it's super simplified. And as I'm painting, I'm always looking for places to put the color that I'm using. So this green that I had for the stem, I'm kind of looking around seeing where else am I gonna put this? And I see a little bit on the inside. There's this really bright green, almost a white coming through right here. How do I keep a steady hand? I really um, just practice, I guess. My hands are pretty shaky. But it's kind of one of those things where the quicker you go, the better it turns out. You just have to have a little more confidence. So everything's bleeding like uh, like earlier. And that's okay. I agree, shaky hands do add variation. Um, I kind of learned that from my friend slash unofficial mentor, Chris Greco, because I would draw these buildings and my lines would be so shaky. And I was getting frustrated, you know, wanting like architectural clean lines. Um, but he kind of taught me to just embrace it and it adds a little bit of charm. Which, you know, I agree. And I'm much less picky about it. Adding a little bit of purple to kind of push these shadows back. All right, so Now that we have all the bright parts kind of laid in, I'm gonna try to strategically paint the shadows. And it's tricky because the shaded petals are almost a green, but they still have bits of this bright yellow coming through. And you want to be squinting at this point, um, checking your values. The beauty of gouache is that you can remove paint a little bit. So if I put something down and I'm like, oh God, this is too dark, I can go back and lift it up slightly. And these petals, they're almost 
disappearing into the shadow. painting my whole life pretty much. I've been painting from life just recently and painting from life changed everything for me. It's all I want to do. You know, I, I went to school as an illustrator but um, and we painted from life a little bit there but the stuff that I did back then was nothing like what I'm doing now. Did a lot of like cutesy uh, children's book illustrations. And then I worked in the games industry for a while. But um, I've been painting almost every day from life for a couple of years now. And that's really helped me. I want to go and, uh, what am I doing? Let's paint some more lavender. You can probably hear the indecisiveness in my voice. I don't know what it is about this week, but I have been setting up so many still lives and taking it down and setting it up and taking it down like a million times. Just super indecisive. Um, okay, lavender. I'm gonna sketch this down real quick. This is a different kind of lavender. Now let's just continue. And I will be going over all of these again. Don't think that they're done. Um, sorry to those that are watching the whole thing. I just wanna reiterate that I am kind of working around in a circle. Just blocking stuff in right now. I love this lavender because it's nice and dark. I have a couple of these up here, so I'm getting a little confused which one I'm painting. Uh, I don't always sketch things before I go for it. I mix it up kind of depends on my mood, but generally I do like to sketch it in there just to make sure the drawing isn't way off. As you can tell, I am a very crude sketcher. I don't obsess over details or focus on the drawing too much. It's more just, um, Figuring out where it's laying on the page. Uh, yeah, so gouache is an opaque watercolor and a lot of people use the same materials, like the same papers as traditional watercolor. Oh, I need to remove these. I'm getting so confused. Painting the wrong things. Okay. Um, I like using cold press watercolor paper. 
Specifically, I use Arches Cold Press Watercolor Blocks. They are pretty pricey, I'll be honest. But I am not rich. <laughs> and I think it's worth it. The quality of the paper is really noticeable. But if you're just starting out, definitely just try it out first before you splurge on really expensive supplies. There's some decent uh, brands that I like that'll give you a good idea for the feel of gouache without spending a ton of money. Because I get into a lot of different hobbies and I spend so much money on them and then I just fall out of love with it. So I don't want that to happen to you here. One of the cheaper brands of paper that I use is called Strathmore um, Visual Journal. And it's a little sketchbook. I like the, I think it's five by eight size. And I like using that. It's got really nice paper. It's only, you know, five bucks on Amazon or at Jerry's, wherever you buy your art supplies. They do have a larger pad. I think it's a, a nine by 12. And I personally didn't like that as much. The paper, while it's pretty thick, I, I found that it kind of warped a little bit. But at the smaller size, you don't really have to worry about it warping. All right. sound is my dog. I was so confused. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kate. All right, let's get some shadows on these guys while we're talking about shadows. And pay attention to the shadow colors. It's not always the same color going straight down. It changes. Although at this phase, this beginning phase, I'm not super particular about getting the exact colors. It's mostly just about the values and shadow direction. Especially since I am relying a little bit on natural light if it was completely dark out and I was using studio light, I would be a little less picky about rushing to get the shadows in there. So adding a little bit of blue, there's this nice, uh, almost sky blue coming in to the shadows. Um, I really want to work on this one a little bit. Just add some of these lighter parts to the petals. So there's a petal here. And I'm hoping to get this kind of fish scale look that I'm seeing. And at the end of this, I'm going to go in and kind of cut these out in Photoshop. And that's how I make my stickers. While 
I'm doing that, I'll add a little more color to this lavender. I'm thinking I'm not going to get super into the detail <clears throat> of the flowers. It's not really my style. But I do want to hint at the silhouette. You know, these little tiny petals coming out. And, hmm, what am I gonna work on next? So I have, um, this butterfly bush. This butterfly bush is from our backyard. I've done a lot of paintings out there with the chickens resting underneath it. And it's really pretty. It has like this white leaf uh, backing color. It's a very creamy, sagey color. And then a really dark green in the front. It has all these tiny purple flowers that go well with the lavender. Maybe I'll do that. Kind of playing with the angle and seeing um, how, what is the best angle for this? I'm going with it kind of facing this direction. I'm gonna move up a brush size. I'm gonna be simplifying this a little bit more and let's try without drawing it. You can see if I mess it up. Maybe it'll be a lesson on how we should definitely be drawing these in. <laughs> or it might be a lesson on how winning it can work out as well. A lot of really neat colors in here. Purples and reds and maroons. The leaf colors, very interesting. They're very grayed down. Let's get this general stem in here so we have a basis. I like the tip of the stem, it's orangey and earthy in color. See, my lines are not straight and I'm embracing it. I'm looking at the negative shape. So the negative shape is the shape that's around everything. So I'm looking at this white and using that as a drawing tool. Of a foreshortened leaf coming at us. Doing the negative shapes is great for foreshortening. Um, if you don't know what foresh foreshortening is, it's whenever an object's coming straight at you, like a hand going like this towards you. Um, looking at the negative shapes and working from that is really helpful. It also helps if you have your shadows in there to find the negative shapes. It's 
So this green is carried up and through for the top. really dark spots, almost black, but they're more like a muddy lavender. But these are the darkest spots. And I'm all about values. You can see little bits of the silhouette of the flowers. I'm going to try to put some of that in there. I also see hints of red, which is going to be nice to throw in here. It's kind of at the base of the flower. Put in some of the shadow colors. Are you laughing at my my hand gesture? Okay, so Walking in the shadow. Mm. Let's get in this stem shadow. Carries all the way down. shadow. It's kind of cool. Carries over this leaf and kind of fades out. Oops. <laughs> I do that a lot. I have paint on my fingertips and I forget. So when I use it to wipe like that, I end up smearing this paint all over. I like to play with edges a little bit with gouache. You can use a really watered down brush and just kind of lightly feather them out. <laughs> Took me a while to figure this kind of stuff out. When I started, I was very frustrated with how all my edges were super sharp with gouache and it was difficult to blend. I feel like um, what do I feel like? Let's do another lemon. Where am I going to put this guy? I will do it. This one's a little closer to me and not as in the light. Again, I'm skipping the, the drawing. I'm using this as kind of like a sketch. There we go. And this is a little bit of a backlit lemon. So I'm watering down my yellow paint again and doing a wash. And hopefully I'll be able to leave some of this And 
the shadow part, what is the way of this lemon called? Well, whatever it is. It's kind of a gray down bluish tint. Get in some of these shadows. Adding the darkest contact shadows. Oh yeah, I am painting them with reference. If you stick around long enough, I will show you what I'm looking at. But uh, everything is set up very difficult. So um, I can't really do that right now. But I am going to be saving this video and I'll also post it on my YouTube channel. I think my username is just Heather Ean instead of Heather Ean Art. And I'm thinking of trying to build up my YouTube channel and maybe get a little more videos, uh, videos on maybe products, whatever you guys want. Thank you, Ray. All right, um, working on a shadow still. It's a little grayed and blue. There's all sorts of colors in this shadow. It's not just one. I know I said it, but I'm gonna keep repeating it. It kind of drives me crazy when I see artists that paint shadows and all the shadows are just this flat color. If it's intentional, then I don't mind. We all have different tastes. We're filling up the page. I did have this um, pretty red, I think it's called salvia flower, but it kind of got droopy really fast. I might still try to do it. The bees love this flower. Let's see, I think I have a better one up here. All right. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna work on this flower a little more. Or maybe, there I go, being indecisive again. This red flower is really pretty, but it's just kind of mush right now. I think we're going to skip it. Tom and Sid. Okay. Um, oh, I'm all over the place. Let's go touch up these lemons. You 
you notice I paint lemons a lot. I just find them really soothing and simple, but it's a very satisfying thing to paint. Not everything has to be a crazy challenge, although I'm all for challenging yourself. You do need to kind of have stuff that you just enjoy. I feel like I'm sounding like Bob Ross, but I love Bob Ross. Not quite as dark in there. This shadow color of the lemon is a lot warmer than you'd expect. There we go. I'm going to see if I can use some of the same color on this lemon. There's a tiny bit of white, or not white, but light hitting um, this rind at the edge. <coughs> and here, I didn't cut the lemon super clean, so it's got a little bit of the kind of dividing skin. to the shadow around the edges. The edges get a lot softer. It's a little bit of blue over here. Um, I'm gonna work on this flower a bit more. Squinting and kind of unifying the shadow shapes. So anything really bright that's in the shadow, I want to push back, even if it looks brighter. Um, it's probably just fooling the eye. So I do that a lot. I'll often keep going back and pushing areas. Okay. It's a little bit of an orange. 